So I've been planning on doing a video about nuclear weapons for a while now. I'm sure by this point you've all heard about North Korea agreeing to nuclear disarmament and officially ending the Korean War the other day. That blew my mind when I heard it. They've kept everybody on the edge of their seats for who knows how long. Stressful shit. And it's been the world's largest hostage situation for years. But even if North Korea is apparently calmed down, there are always countries ready to engage in nuclear war, like Russia or Iran or the US. So let's talk about nuclear weapons and power. Let's get into it. So how does a nuclear bomb work? Well, there are a number of different types. Let's talk about atomic bombs first. Atomic bombs were used on Japan in World War II. The two used were named Little Boy and Fat Man, and they were used on Hiroshima and Nagasaki, Japan, in August of 1945. The way it works is by shooting neutrons at a radioactive material like plutonium or uranium. When the neutrons hit the radioactive material, it forces them to break apart, which releases a massive amount of energy called nuclear fission. But the radioactive material has to be super pure, so uranium is found Found in mines just like coal is, but it's mixed in with rock and stuff, so it has to be extracted from the rock and purified, which is a very difficult, long, expensive process. And it's really hard to cover up your tracks if you're doing the purification process. Which, by the way, is why the Iran deal still allowed them to purify up to like 3% purity or something. You need way more pure than that. They simply couldn't do anything with that level of purity. And there's just no way to cover it up if you have 99% pure uranium nearby. Uranium's half-life is about 4.5 billion years, which means it takes about 4.5 billion years for about half of the uranium present to decay into lead. So anyways, that's how the atomic bomb works. Now about the hydrogen bomb. This one has never been used on a population of people, but it's the next step in nuclear weapons. The atomic bomb works purely on fission, or atom splitting. The hydrogen bomb works on both fission and fusion, where atoms are fused together. So it starts out with atomic fission, where X-ray radiation is released with the first fission explosion. But X-rays are on the light spectrum, and blast shockwaves aren't, so you get the fission explosion which releases the X-rays, and basically before the fission shockwave even starts, the X-rays trigger the nuclear fusion reaction, which produces even more energy. So it's basically a nuclear weapon that's being detonated by another nuclear weapon. Then we have neutron bombs. Those are a little different, but we'll get into those another time. While we're on the subject, I should probably mention nuclear power. In a traditional power plant, something is burned, and that heat is used to boil water and the steam from that is used to turn a turbine, or what basically amounts to a giant fan, like the alternator in your car. If you've ever looked at the alternator in your car, it looks like this. Just a big fan with some metal prongs sticking out. And when the fan turns, electricity comes out of the prong. In the case of an alternator, those prongs are then attached to your car's battery and used to charge it. In the case of a power plant, those prongs are connected to wires which eventually find their way to your electrical outlet. It's a lot more complicated than that, but that's the bottom line. But burn Burning coal or natural gas or whatever it is to power your house releases carbon into the air, which is really, really bad for the environment in those quantities. A little bit of it will be absorbed by trees and the ocean and stuff, but carbon absorbs and holds in heat in the air. So when more carbon is released into the air, the ocean absorbs it and gets warmer. And that leads to ice on the poles melting, which makes the sea level rise. Not to mention the fact that hurricanes are a direct result of warmer oceans. But I digress. So what about nuclear power? How does it work? Well, for one thing, we aren't releasing carbon into the air, so that's a plus. Basically, you have two types of rods with nuclear power, active rods and control rods. So what happens is when neutrons are shot at the active rods, they slam into the active rods with radioactive material Material, and they force the radioactive material to break apart, generating heat in a fission reaction. Basically just like an atomic bomb without the explosion. That heats up the water, generating steam, which turns the turbine, which powers your house. But they want to keep the reaction under control, so if the rods start to get too hot or something, then they'll lower the control rods in, which absorb the extra neutrons to slow or stop the reaction. There's a lot of fear surrounding nuclear power because of what happened at Chernobyl, but right now, nuclear power is the best reliable carbon carbon-free method of power generation we have, and I think it's going to be instrumental in transitioning us away from fossil fuels. I better take a few minutes to talk about Chernobyl and Fukushima. In 1986, in Chernobyl, Russia, they were running a safety procedure to
test on the nuclear reactor. During the test, a power spike occurred in the core, which caused some of the active rods to fracture, which caused a blockage preventing the control rod mechanism from lowering the control rods in to control the reaction. At that point, the reaction went completely out of control. There was a massive explosion of steam blowing out the top of the plant, and the steam was charged with radioactive material. The steam formed a cloud over the reactor, which then proceeded to make its way across Europe, carrying radioactive fallout with it. Eventually, the core material got so hot that it melted right through the housing chamber and into the ground. There was radioactive material everywhere. It had to be cleaned up or it was going to kill everybody. I mean everybody. Remember the radioactive cloud floating over Europe? So people volunteered to go into the reactor knowing they would die from radiation poisoning to stop chain reactions from happening, thus saving millions, maybe billions of people from radiation poisoning or cancer. These people knew they were going to die when they went in there. They knew they weren't going to make it out alive, and they still went for the sake of others. That is heroism, and they should be honored for it. Anyways, that was the Chernobyl disaster in a nutshell. The remaining radioactive material is still there, and it'll take another 20,000 years before Chernobyl is habitable again. If you go there, you can see a nearby forest that's turned red from the ambient radioactivity in the air. This is truly a nuclear wasteland, but we learn from those mistakes. We know what caused the problem, and we take precautions to prevent that kind of thing in nuclear reactors today. Unfortunately, something very similar happened in Fukushima, Japan in 2011, but that was actually due to a combination of an earthquake and then a tsunami following that earthquake, knocking out the reactor's failsafes. They were prepared for an earthquake, but they hadn't planned for the tsunami. After the Fukushima disaster, the Japanese government had to pull the top layer of soil off the ground in the entire area and bury it as radioactive waste. On the plus side, it gave us more experience with how to prevent massive disasters like that. And now we build in even more safety measures and failsafes. Those were two massively, possibly dystopia-creating events. But here we are today, and we're stronger because of it. Even with those disasters under our belt, I believe nuclear power is still the best option to help transition us to truly clean energy. Anyways, that's all I've got for you. Follow me on Discord, Patreon, and all social media. Thanks for watching, guys.